Now, configuring a delegated RODC administrator is one thing, but we have to actually set the configuration for which passwords we want to cache on that local DC for it to really become useful to us. Let me create over here, let's just in my company, let me create a group of users called, for example, let's just create a group here called my Phoenix users. These are the users that uh, we will assume are physically located in the Phoenix office. Well, here on my Phoenix DC, you'll notice that the password replication policy is another tab that exists when I'm focused on a remote uh, read-only domain controller. And it is this tab where we determine which users are going to have their passwords cached whenever they log in using this RODC. For a user or group or for a set of computers, I can determine whether or not the, the password will be allowed or whether the password will specifically be denied on that RODC. You'll see by default the server operators, backup operators, administrators, and account operators groups are automatically denied, so we're, we're trying to protect ourselves here. And the, there is also an, another group called Denied RODC Password Replication Group, which automatically denies them as well. If we want, we can add additional uh, password settings group. This will be one for either allowing or denying. In my case, this would be allowing. And then I need to determine which group I want to use. This would be the Phoenix Users Group. I'll choose by Phoenix Users Group. And you'll see now that any of the users of the Phoenix Users Group will end up having their passwords cached on this RODC. So again, be careful here. Your whole point of this is in trying to protect yourselves against the loss of a domain controller. And the last thing you want to have happen is someone to take that domain controller and find some useful information on it. Now, occasionally you may need to figure out which users are actually have had their passwords replicated down to this RODC. And down here under the, strangely, the advanced button, I wish they would have given this a better name, but under the, under the advanced button, we can take a look at the accounts whose passwords are currently stored on this RODC. These are going to be user accounts. These are also going to be computer accounts. And so you'll see I can choose the passwords here and uh, just see which ones are there. If I want, I can pre-populate passwords for other users. I may want to do this, for example, if I know I've got a list of users that they're just it's really just taking a long time for them to log in, and I can pre-populate those passwords in the off hours to speed up their logon the next time they come down. But this is the location where I can remove those uh, users and computers that are currently have their accounts and passwords stored on this RODC. I can also take a look at the accounts that have been authenticated to this RODC as well. Remember when I said accounts that have permissions, uh, uh, domain admin, enterprise admin permissions, you don't want to use those to log on to an RODC. I violated my own rule here and logged into that RODC directly. So I've already done something that I probably shouldn't do. Again, this tool here is used to help you identify whether or not you are going to be at risk for compromise should somebody steal that RODC. The last tab up here is for the resultant policy. This resultant policy helps you determine whether or not a user or group is actually going to be allowed or denied based on the different rules that you select. As with everything in Windows, the deny automatically overrides any of the allows, so it's a good choice. If you choose to deny, just know that that's going to be denied.